what you're about to see are going to be the, the reaching paths of a monkey that's reaching on a screen, trying to hit targets for juice reward. And the monkey's sitting in a chair, reaching for these targets on a screen. And there's an implant in his brain. It's 200 channel arrays um, that are recording roughly 200 neurons from primary motor cortex. Okay. Now he's not aware of any of that. As far as he knows, he's just reaching on the screen for, uh, for a juice reward. But what we're going to try and do is decode at every moment in time um, what he's trying to do, right? And success for us would be we're able to perfectly track and recreate the trajectories of each and every reach that he actually makes. Because the idea would be, well, what if this weren't a healthy monkey? What if this was an injured patient? We would want to be able to decode in real time, accurately, in the moment, exactly what the person is trying to do. And here we know what the monkey's trying to do because he's actually, he's actually doing it. So I'll, I'll, now I'll play the movie. And in black, you're seeing the actual reach trajectories. Some of them are straight, some of them are curved because he sometimes has to reach around barriers in order to get to the target and, and get his reward. And uh, the video hasn't been sped up. This is real time. Uh, um, well-trained monkeys reach very quickly. And the blue trace is uh, our decode in real time um, based on the neural data at that moment and over about a half a second before that moment. It's our guess as to what it is he's trying to do at that moment. And as you can see, the decode is quite accurate and it's very rapid, it's very quick. We're able to keep pace with the rapid pace of the animal and generally come very close to decoding what he was actually intending to do. And so in the case of a paralyzed patient, obviously they're, they're not actually making the movement. So there wouldn't be any black line on the screen. There would be only the blue line. And the, the idea would be that the patient could move a cursor on a screen or any of a number of other objects um, uh, simply by trying to make that movement. So the, the person would try and execute the movement just the same way you or I would. Um, if, for example, they have a spinal cord injury, they will try, but they won't succeed because the information can't get to the muscles. But we would render on the screen the motion of the cursor that would hopefully, as you're seeing here, come very close to matching what it was they were actually intending to do. And of course, it wouldn't have to be a cursor on a screen. That might be what you would want if you wanted to surf the web or if you wanted to type an email. But it really could be any kind of a movement. Um, it could be attempting to move a prosthetic wheelchair through the world. Um, the decode algorithm that we're using is not specific to any particular kind of movement. It could be used to decode any kind of movement that the, the, the patient or the clinician cared about.